everyone. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is cleaning and decluttering and how in the process of creating order, there's first expanded chaos most often. And uh, we get to look at that phenomena together and see how best to navigate that and before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue, and now let's press our palms together, vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction, the temperature, the pressure, the motion, the tickling and tingling when you stop, and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables us to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, Cleaning and decluttering. I was speaking with someone yesterday talking about how I have essentially ripped my office apart and am putting it back together because I got this remarkable, wonderful, extraordinary uh, 40-year-old roll-top desk, Oak, um, that's kind of been the desk of my dreams. But in the process, I had to rearrange my whole office and move bookshelves and find places for files and everything is everywhere. So um, I'm in this moment of uh, chaos on the way to a, a greater order. And I think that we can look at that dynamic as, as one that plays out culturally, that plays out personally, that plays out in, in, in material environments that all in all, uh, chaos sort of precedes new order. Or when there's a shifting of order, we first need to disassemble the, um, the existing paradigm, right? So uh, in, in the face of that chaos, it's very easy to become overwhelmed and how can we face that? How can we address that in a way that overwhelm, in a way that is life affirming, that leads us in the direction of our intentions and doesn't paralyze us. It's, it's challenging. I think, I think, the notion of self-care becomes even more important in these times of chaos, whether it's self-created, like if you're tearing a room apart to uh, reorganize it, or whether it is culturally with all the challenges that we face as a collective population. Uh, how do we manage ourselves? How do we care for ourselves in these, these times of chaos? So what I find is I've, I personally fluctuate between hyper hyper attention and just needing to back off, you know, being uh, in paralysis. And there's a point where you might literally find yourself walking in circles, trying to navigate uh, the chaos. And 
you could it could also be a figurative experience where we're walking in circles where we just seem to not be able to get out of our own way and at those times as as much as we might feel pressured to complete fulfill continue with whatever it is whatever the project is at hand we might have a deadline we might have um other people even pressuring us or or exerting their will and desires um i i find that it's really important to take a moment to take time and and find a, a space a way um to calm ourselves at least i find that's for the case for me i think i'm coming to recognize how i personally and i imagine quite a few of you also have a pretty sensitive nervous system and i'm coming to be more and more respectful of that sensitivity and to recognize it before pushing myself off the edge of a cliff and i'm wondering if you have the same kind of sensibility where you push and push and push and push and then you're over the cliff before you know it and then it takes a long time to come back to recover and having done that enough times in my life i've now uh, come to be more aware of when those stressors are occurring and I'm respectful and responsive to the fact that there's, there's a need to regroup. And I encourage, I encourage all of us to be paying attention to our inner signals when things start feeling overwhelming, when it feels like we're starting to get stressed, starting to get maxed. Some of us need more quiet time than others. Some of us need different ways to or decompress and need that decompression more often than others. And that's okay. Just know it. And, you know, since other people don't necessarily share the same sensibilities or the same sensitivities, it's valuable to be able to announce your style or to announce your needs to people before it gets to a critical point. So to be able to say, you know what, I can, I find that I can easily get overwhelmed or I need to take frequent breaks or, um, I, you know, I, I, when I tell you I need a little space, it's not personal. It's, it's that I'm just sort of needing to recalibrate. I remember I was once working a um, trade show and someone was kind of brain dumping a whole bunch of information for me. And I got to a point where I was overwhelmed and I said, I just need a minute. And they were on a clock and they were just going to keep going and keep going. And it was really interesting because it was very hard for me to assert that in a way that they finally realized I needed, I, I was going to take a break. I needed to take a break and it was okay if they didn't like it, but I was taking a break. And um, it, 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 we were at cross purposes. They had one style, I had another style. They were trying to give me information. I was at an overload point and couldn't receive anymore. And I just needed to step away and breathe. And I can, now that I know that that's my style, now that I know that I have those sensitivities, um, I can probably express that need more effectively. And I realized that had I been able to do that, it wouldn't have been such a stressed encounter. And so recognizing our needs in these times of chaos you know, in these times of 
clearing and reorganization, uh, it's important to pay attention uh, to monitor our, our inner state and not push ourselves beyond our breaking point. So it's a, that's a delicate balance is to maybe push ourselves to stretch, but also we don't want to go beyond the breaking point. And um, that is something that I personally have had a lot of experience with and had a lot of recovery time. When you push yourself beyond the breaking point, the recovery time is way more than the time that it would have taken to take the break that was needed. So um, let's just look again at this whole this whole chaos and clearing and decluttering thing, because there are many aspects of life that we can declutter. And what that means is going through a process of sorting, of revisiting things, of um evaluating things. Do I want this? Do I not want this? And that can go with personal preferences as well. It can go in our personal lives in terms of all the to-dos that we might have. Um, many people have a to-do list that is arms long. And what is called for in those situations because people uh, reside in a constant state of overwhelm oftentimes is to declutter that list to look at what do I want? What am I really committed to? What is truly important to me? Because these to-do lists can be super oppressive and can be paralyzing. And the thing is that they become so long because we tend not to prioritize effectively. And I'll give an example. Um, I've never been a social media person, despite these, these uh, morning conversations. I, I don't really have any other presence on social media. And I had this idea that in order to forward my business, I needed to create social media presence, but I didn't want to do it. It was on a to-do list literally for years. And I just did not have the will to do it. And finally, in, in sort of a decluttering mode, I eliminated it from my list. I said, you know what? I'm not going to do it. I just made a resolution. I'm not doing it. And if and when I choose to do it, then I'll do it. But I'm not doing it just because, because somebody says I should. I don't, I'm not aligned with it. So those choices, they're, they're challenging choices. And sometimes those choices, those decluttering choices that we make in our lives, sometimes they're disruptive to other people. Sometimes other people are expecting you to be or act a certain way, to um, respond a certain way, to take on certain responsibilities. And uh, oftentimes we end up taking on responsibilities for other people. And sometimes we get to clear them, to declutter them, to relieve ourselves of them. And um, when we talk about cleaning, this is an interesting thing too, is like how clean is clean? We could go at things with a toothbrush. We could go at things with a light feather dusting. You know, we could just, uh, you know, there, there are degrees for how much we're going to um, engage, how deeply we feel the necessity to engage with the um, clearing or the cleaning or the decluttering. You know, there may be things, maybe corners that you're not ready to get to yet, or you may be in a place where you have this sense of 
revitalization and energy and you can go through things at a at a greater depth um and the same thing with self assessment self growth self um realization where we can we have different energies at different times to be able to really delve into the um corners nooks and crannies of our lives whether they be in our physical environment or our mental emotional spiritual environment it's the energy of spring it's so interesting so i was speaking with uh somebody yesterday and they were telling me that a whole bunch of their clients as i was saying oh i'm i've torn apart my office i'm redoing everything they said um that they have a bunch of clients who are doing the same thing. And then it occurred to me, it's spring. It's spring. And isn't it interesting that we talk about spring cleaning? Because it's a revitalization. There's an energy of newness. There's an energy of active growth and change happening. And why not capitalize on that when we have the opportunity you know where winter typically is a is an inward place where spring is is new energy new life new expression and so it can be kind of um chaotic you know there's all this life happening all over the place all this newness popping into the world and um like clearing cleaning eventually uh we get into a place where there's a greater sense of of um rhythm but but the cleaning and clearing and decluttering is kind of a a dis jointed melody you, you know because we're we're all over the place this corner that corner these things where do these go do i keep them do i where do i put them uh do i are they trash are they giveaways where do i send them how do i rehome things lots and lots of considerations and again Many of us, I imagine, like myself, need to come back to a place of oh, finding that center, finding that balance in the midst of the chaos that, as we said before, can be so overwhelming. And finding, finding the happy chaos, finding the place of growth, without like stretching but not until the breaking point just before you know just before or maybe a little bit more than before the breaking point where we are still able to find balance retrieve our energy revitalize and create something new so creation's messy. Creation is messy. And when we're decluttering, what we're we are creating a radical change of energy. The same thing with cleaning. <coughs> I notice that when I when I get into cleaning and I clean my whole place, the energy of it feels radically different. It looks different. And it's not because it looked so dirty before, but there's something very different in the feel of that place. And I think it's really important for us to become more and more attuned to these feelings, the um, the feedback that we get our our sensing this feeling sense that we can cultivate that actually gives us lots and lots of information 
about the balance of a space, the balance of ourselves. We, you know, we can say, I feel off today. Well, what does that mean? What does it mean to feel off? What does it mean to walk into a space and feel expanded versus constricted? And that's that's what we want to be sensitizing ourselves to, to allow ourselves to use more of our senses. We have more than our standardly understood five senses. If we can allow ourselves to pick up on those senses, to be responsive to those senses, to be aware of those senses, we can find and and we can find a greater flow in life because we have we do have inner GPS. It's just that we're taught in so many ways to override it. And what I'm advocating here is that we actually pay attention that we elevate those senses, that we become more aware and responsive so that in the midst of cleaning or clearing or chaos, we can better find a balance and take breaks, take frequent breaks. Don't push past the point where you feel like you're pushing past. We can push a bit and that can be a good thing and there's a point at which it isn't. And so what I'm advocating is tuning in and being respectful, listening. So I've I've had so many experiences with this, and I imagine you have to where you had a sense about something, but you pushed and you pushed, or you went ahead anyway, and then or maybe you got a message from the universe, you know what, it's time to slow down. Slow down, slow down, you don't slow down. Come on, slow down. Nope, I'm not slowing down until finally something happens that makes you slow down so you don't even have a choice. And so that's that's the training boot camp that so many of us have been through to learn when we get the message, listen, because the universe will whisper and then it'll speak more loudly and then it'll shout and then then it'll just knock you on your ear if you're not paying attention. So life flows so much more smoothly when we listen. And in these times of chaos, listening becomes even more important <clears throat> a skill and i call it a skill because these are these senses these other ways of knowing <clears throat> and perceiving are available to us and we can cultivate them and while our culture teaches us to ignore them truly actively teaches us to ignore these other senses, like with phrases like, just do it. Like, it doesn't matter how you think. It doesn't matter how you feel. Just do it. Um, at some points, there may be value to that. And let's pay attention. Let's become more mindful. Let's become more present and respectful of our of the messages that we're receiving from these other senses let's cultivate them because we have the ability to be so much more connected so much more connected to ourselves so much more connected to each other so much more connected to our environment and as we cultivate those connections whole new worlds open up of possibility, of uh, expression, of a tr tremendous richness that makes life so much more 
fulfilling and delightful. So that's it for today. I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live here each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel. And um, I invite you to please like and follow the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel and mine. The links are in the description. And as always, it's a tremendous pleasure and privilege to share these morning musings on what it is to be human. So until next time, so much love to you.